Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day so far, so good. Um, it's a good thing if you're seeing me because God's got purpose for you today. But uh, today's topic, guys, is um, choose friends wisely. And it's just talking about, uh, we'll get into it in a minute, but just a rough summary. Uh, summary. Um, don't hang with people, you know, um, obviously we're not supposed to hang with non-Christians up close and personal. Sure, we witness to them, we, we pray with them, we talk to them. Give them the word of God. Let them know where hope is found. But the thing is, with Christians, we can't be hanging with Christians that drink and party and do these things because it will corrupt you. Evil spirit will corrupt the good, good, good spirit. So you got to stay away from Christians that are living a, you know, still a worldly life because they're going to drag you down with them. So choose your friends wisely. Uh, the reading comes from um, 1 Corinthians. The book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. It says, I wrote, I wrote you in my previous letter not to associate closely and habitually with unchaste, impure people. Amen. And I'm going to get into the reading. But I hope everybody's having a good day out there. But it's all about choosing your friends wisely. You know, you want to surround yourself with good God-fearing people because if they don't respect God and love Jesus Christ for what He did and for what God did sending His only His only Son, they're not going to love and respect you. So here, here we go. You know how many times like other people have been hurt, you know, oh man, I can't believe he did that or she did that. I've known him for so long. If they don't know God, they're not your friend. If they ain't God's friend, they're not your friend. They're only friends with you to get what they can from you and to use you. You know, and that's what it comes down to. The world uses people to get what they can. So here we go, guys. Uh, choose friends wisely. But this is really, um, before I get started, it's coming down to Christian folks that are still acting worldly. We must stay away from them, man. Keep a distance. Pray with them. Sure, show them love. Hang out with them for a few minutes, you know. But got to say hi and bye quickly and get in and get out, man. Because their their spirit will corrupt you. Whatever spirit you're hanging around, you know, um, will corrupt you. And, and if it's hanging with a good Christian brother, it's going to help you, not hurt you, like a Christian who's uh, living still of the world. So here we go. But we don't shun them. We don't shun them. Jesus hung with sinners to preach to them, give them the word, and tell them how to get help. So here we go. It says, the company we keep, the company you keep um, has such influence on your spiritual life. Fellowshipping with godly people will spend you will help you speed up your way to victory. It says while fellowshipping with those who are ungodly would drag you down in defeat. It says that's why the Bible has some things to say about your friends. This um, that's why it tells you to separate yourself from the world. Don't be don't conform to the world, but be transformed by the word of God, because evil companions will corrupt you. It's inevitable, man. It just will happen. Believe me, I, I know about this, man. Um, no, it says, now I'm talking about a ministry. Jesus himself ministered for two sinners. It says, you have to mix mix with them to preach and to pray with them. What I'm talking about here, it says, um, are the people you choose as your friends. It says, if you want to walk in things of uh, the Lord, don't choose friends who walk in the things of the devil. People who talk and act ungodly, who don't give God any place in their lives, they'll pull you down as well. As you rub shoulders with them, you expose yourself to temptation. It says you'll 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 get so familiar with sin it will start appear less repulsive to you. Sooner or later, you'll fall into it. And it's you know we we live a godly life, and then once we start hanging out with some friends, you know. Um, like when I was in prison, um, there was like groups of Christian brothers, they would crack a dirty joke, you know, right after chapel or something, and they go, oh, what, what are you, holier than thou, da, 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 no, man, I can't laugh at your joke and appease you and disrespect my Father God in heaven and Jesus Christ, it ain't disrespecting you, it's respecting my Father, you know, and then that's when all the, the attitude comes in and stuff, and this is what this is speaking of, you don't need to be around that to, to be putting through that, you want to be around good God-fearing people, who love and respect God, who love talking about His Word, and who are actually not just reading His Word, but applying it to their life. And that's what you want to hang. That's who you want to hang with, guys, so you can grow. You know, it'd be like hanging out. Say, I want to be a better basketball player, right? Right. So, how can I be a better basketball player hanging out with guys who just talk about how good they are, 
but they never actually go out and perform, you know, and that's that's a good good analogy right there, and it's like you need to hang with people who work hard, you know, hard at work trying to apply God's word to their life, and you could see it in the fruit of their tree, you know, and, and them just shining for the Lord, and not just talking about shining for the Lord, but actually doing it, so it says, um, uh, it says rubbing shoulders with them, you'll you you expose you expose yourself to temptation, and what that means too is uh, say I'm trying to lose weight. If I'm trying to lose weight, guys, I'm not going to go hang at the bakery and walk around looking at the donuts and the cakes and strawberry shortcake and all this right out jelly turnovers, <laughs> you know. So we want to stay away from that temptation. We don't need to tempt our tempt ourselves. You know what I mean? You know, if, uh, if I'm having trouble with um you know looking at women and I'm trying to uh you know, focus on, you know, finding a good wife, I mean, hanging at the strip club is not going to be a good idea, so basically, you get the concept, right, uh, you don't need to be tempted, you want to stay far away from temptation as you can, and you don't need people around you to help you uh, fall into sin, you want to be around good brothers and sisters that will keep you from falling into sin, man, you know, and here we go, it says, you'll get so familiar with sin, it'll start to appear less repulsive to you, and sooner or later, you're going to fall into it, so choose your friends wisely, uh, fellowship with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Second Timothy 2.22 Expose yourself to their love and peace and let their faith rub off on you. So that's pretty pretty much going to be the lesson for today. But I want you to go, we're going to both read actually, but you can go read um, it's, uh, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 5. Uh, it's pretty short, but it's real powerful, of course. Every in one sentence of the Bible is powerful than anything man offers here in this world. But here it is, um, 1 Corinthians, um, we're going to read chapter 5, 9 through 13, I believe. Yeah, 13. So 9 through 13. Here we go. It says, Immorality must be judged. It says, I wrote to you in this epistle not to keep company with sexual immoral, immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with sexually immoral people of this world. So he's speaking of uh, hanging with Christians that are still, you know, banging on this world. You know what I mean? And um, dipping into things of this world when we should put that away. And, you know, that's behind us. We can't keep dragging along with us on a big rope wherever we go and then talk about it and this and that. You know, um, glorifying what the Satan did in our lives and all this. It's okay to share a testimony. You know, but once they start getting detailed graphic, you know, that's when Satan's trying to work on you now to drag you into the same trap your friend's in, you know, Christian brother or sister. It says, or the conventionists of ex, um, extorters, extorters or idolaters. It says, since when you would go out, um, uh, go out um, of this world, it says number 11, um, but now I've written to you to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or conventions or an adulterer or a revolver or a drunkard or ex extortioner not even to eat with such a person wow they don't this is apostle paul he don't even want you sitting down with people that are like that because it, what's in their heart they're going to speak right like i speak you know what's on my heart it's the love of god people animals you know just just whatever right and it's the spirit of god in me but these guys you know have got up here but not in here. So they're going to speak what's in their heart, and it's usually some nasty jokes, some some negative things, talking bad about people, criticizing people, and then you're going to get caught up in that because it's what what you're focused on, listening to them. So you're going to have an answer and re want to respond and be a part of that conversation, and now that's when Satan hooks you, reels you in to a brother or sister who's not really living up to God's word, but just likes talking about it, and just you know it's that's pretty much it. Actions do speak louder than words. Uh, number 12, verse 12. For what I have done, uh, for for what I have to do with um, judging those who are also are outside. Do not judge those are, who are inside. Got to do that. Um, don't judge a brother or sister. Pray for them. Um, but those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourself evil persons. So, we're going to go down to the study note. And it says, uh, let's see. 9 through 13 it says Paul here corrects a misunderstanding arising out of the previous letter he had sent to the Corinthians. It says he had commanded the Corinthians to withdraw themselves from sexual immoral people. In this letter Paul explains that he is not speaking of pagan culture around them, 
um, he's talking about Christian brothers and sisters. Not, you know, it's to be expected. When people don't have God and Jesus Christ in their life, right, and God's Holy Spirit to lead them away from that, we're not talking about those people. We're talking about our brothers and sisters who we think we can trust. And, you know, we're supposed to be fellowshipping with. But Paul's saying we can't be hanging with them, not even sit down to eat with them. Um, it says, if they withdraw totally, um, they would be unable to function in this world. Instead, he is talking about the immorality in their midst. It says they should judge, they should judge the sin among themselves while still reaching out to the lost in the Corinthian. It says, um, it says out of this world, Christians are called to be influences of the world, not run away from it. Um, they are agents of God to carry out the light of Jesus Christ into the dark world. So it says, um, number 11, it says not to even eat with a, such a person. Eating together is a key part of fellowship and closeness with others. The Corinthians were not not to have fellowship with those who claim to be Christians, but who lives their life dominated by sin. So, you know, we can't be hanging out, basically, is, you know, choose your friends wisely, guys. And it just comes down to what Paul's telling the Corinthians here. We don't, you know, we definitely don't hang out, we don't want to hang out with worldly people because they're of the devil, they can't be trusted, you know what I mean? And they're, you can't make friends with these people. And I, I wasn't a very good friend to anybody, dude, when I didn't know Father God and Jesus Christ, right? I was all about me, lying, deceiving, to get whatever I need, right? But talking about our Christian brothers and sisters, when you see them falling and slipping, we have to step up and iron sharpens iron. Yeah, the, the truth hurts sometimes, you know, because when we're living lies, guys, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm speaking from experience here, you know. And um, I, I didn't want to hear the truth either. and But God humbled me one day to not focus on the people talking to me, but listen to the message that's coming out of that person. And not like going, who does he think he is or who does she think she is? You have to humble yourself and receive this information and put apply it to your life to make yourself better. If this is what you want to do is follow Christ and be the best you can be and have joy and peace, man, through all this craziness. But we can't be hanging out with Christian brothers and sisters that are partying, you know, getting high. Um, it's just going to drag you back down, man. That's all it comes down to. And if they don't respect God, guys, I tell your children, um, young adults out there, if people don't love Jesus Christ, and you can tell somebody who loves God, guys. It's one thing to talk about it, but it's, it's another thing to watch them in action. And actions do speak louder than words, you know. Um... Somebody told me, I don't, you know, it's just a nice compliment. He said, you know, I don't even need to hear you say anything about God or Jesus, man. I just see the love that you show by, you know, your encouraging words, uplifting people. See, people in this world don't do that unless they're trying to, you know, smooth talk you and blow smoke and get whatever they can from you, you know. Hey, nice shoes. Hey, can I borrow 100 bucks? You know what I mean? Hey, nice hat, Daryl. Hey, you got $50? You know, that's how it works out, right? <laughs> and I remember being that guy. So I can laugh here. Actually, this laugh is embarrassment who I used to be. You know, that Saul to Paul moment. Now I'm Paul, you know what I'm saying? And we all going to have that moment, you know, where we leave that life behind to come to be like Paul, the Saul to Paul moment, so to speak, right? And um, we, But we got to drop all those bad habits, man. And the only way we can do it is, see, we, we couldn't do it our whole lives without God. And now I have God in my life. I'm an overcomer, you know, over marijuana and, and stuff and women, you know what I mean? Yeah, I still look at a woman, but it's not the same way Daryl used to look at a woman. I'm looking at her through God's eyes now with respect, love, and just... That's it. Love and respect, not lust of the world of, you know, all the negative things that come with that. The world offers lust. Father God in heaven offers love. It's a family love. Unity, you know what I mean? Just good, good family love. It's supposed to be respect. And uh, the lust is total disrespect. And, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, see you later. You know, whatever. Then you got a baby out of wedlock, maybe AIDS, herpes, uh, you know, everything that comes along with that. Nothing good comes out of sin. So, Choose your friends wisely, guys. It's one thing people talk about God. It's another thing. Are they living life a godly way and doing things that respect, you know, um, that they fear God? Are they doing, saying things and doing things that are good and pleasant in God's eyes? Because if they're not doing that for God, how can you trust them? And why would you want to bring people into your family's life or into your, into your immediate circle, your family, your children, you know, whoever it might be, if they're being immoral and, and they're claiming to be of God, so you trust them to let them in, but hold it for a minute and see what they're doing. They speak what's on their heart. They can talk about God, but, you know, 
the real truth will come out. And we just got to keep a distance, man, you know, from people that that aren't trying to live for God. Because if they ain't living for God, they're not going to be there for you either. So just keep that, keep that in mind. Choose your friends wisely. So that's the message of the day, guys. I'm doing this kind of um, late in the night here. I, I went to bed around 10 o'clock. I woke up around like 12.30. Couldn't go back to sleep. So uh, excuse me if I'm like struggling through this. Um, no coffee this morning because <laughs> I'm heading back to bed after this. But God inspired me to get up and do this video to have it ready in the morning. So um, God bless you and have a beautiful day, guys. And just keep shining for the Lord, man. And remember... People could say they're. I could say I could walk on a basketball court and say, "Oh, I'm the best, man. I'm the best." But now I got to show it. You know what I mean? So, listen to people. What they what they speak is what's on their heart. And any Christian brother and sister out there that's cussing or partying and doing this stuff, or you know, you want to stay away from that, man, because you can't grow. You, it's going to chop you down, man. You know. And uh, I love you guys. I hope you have a blessed day and. Peace be with you, and I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. God willing, if not, he takes me home before you. Guess what? I'm going to leave the lights on like Motel 6. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you guys. Have a great day. And remember, keep shining, keep smiling, and spread that love, encouragement, and hope, and the gospel of Christ. And let's bring people to Jesus Christ so they can have salvation, man, and live life eternal in paradise, man. We're suffering enough here. Let's get this, guys. Let's get it there and shine bright, okay? Toby Mac song, Shine Bright. Go check the song out. <laughs> Everywhere we go, shine bright, right, for the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.